Hey guys, welcome back. 99.9% .9 done. Finished all the painting. No more painting. Not, none, done. Uh, I think it was three or four rounds of going back through and putting and just fixing just little little spots that I didn't like. Uh, stuff on the uh, engine or the uh, impulse deck, and a few little minor oopsies around the edge that I didn't necessarily want to show or want to show, and the paint wasn't covering them. So done with the painting. Ninety-nine point nine percent done. The point zero zero one percent is. Still cleaning masking fluid out of the windows. I uh, just lit this up today to check it, and there's a little warmth coming from up here. Just a touch of warmth coming from this LED, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I can feel it. I hope that's not going to burn through the plastic. Really, I do. I hope that's just going to just be that that warmth. It'll be fine. It'll just be a little warm. That's what I'm hoping. Anyways. Masking fluid removed from the windows. You can kind of see some of these windows are still closed. I missed a few or there's just too much stuff for when I was drilling them because I drilled all these out. Uh, the paint out of there. And not just the paint, the masking fluid. The masking fluid was Elmer's. I didn't use it to silly putty because I didn't like how it was going in there and I didn't think I'd be able to get it out with a dental pick or the drill or all of it out. And you'd see a little bit of that pink in there for eternity. So I just use, and this was easier, just squirt it in the hole and then wipe off the surface. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, go back in with a pin vise and just drill them out. The longer ones I just drilled on either side and in the middle as best I could. And then I, some of them I had to go in with a dental pick and get some of that glue out. The, the porthole ones was pretty easy. Just drill it in and drill it out. Just make sure if you're doing it the way I am uh, with the plastic lens behind it, don't drill through the plastic lens. Uh, I can see why people just put canopy glue or micro crystal clear over these because it's kind of a pain to do it this way. That way you can just drill out, or you won't even have to really drill out the holes because the no, probably paint will probably won't fill all these, maybe the little ones, but not the longer ones. You'll still have to do some touch up, but you know, uh, I wanted depth to my windows. I want my windows to look like there, there was depth and there was a glass behind them. They look pretty good like that. I actually like that effect. And then same thing around the BC deck, that effect kind of holds true. And the back of the uh, bridge here. So just need to clean those out. Uh, and I need to, well, <laughs> something happened to my rec deck windows. They can really not see it. Really can't see it. But these three windows, the one here and these two up here, look like someone went to the rec deck with a giant pail of mashed potatoes and went all over the windows. You can't, again, you can't see it from a distance, but once you get up close, you can. So another reason for doing it with the Elmer's glue is it's water soluble. So if I can't get to a, a specific little bit of schmutz in here, I can always squirt a little water in there and just, you know, take a toothpick and try to loosen it up. But that's what I'm going to have to do here is... The rest of the windows came up pretty fine. These three, for some reason, just didn't feel like that. So I'm going to try to loosen it up with some water. If not, eh, they don't look super bad from a distance. And this is my favorite part. I'm sorry, Observation Lounge. You are awesome, but this is my favorite part at this moment. This light blocking worked. I'm so thankful that all my hard puttying and sanding around here paid off because that is completely light blocked. Uh, you're seeing light underneath here because of the neck. Once the neck is in the neck hole, that won't, that won't, you won't see the red. But yeah, that turned out great. I love the, the red and the blue and the blinkers. This looks awesome. Now that's the other thing I have to do is put the photo etch in here. I'm gonna do that with this. Mainly because it'll give me some working time. Uh, Super glue is awesome when you want something to stick together very quickly, but it also leads a little bit of a more of a film than this stuff. And I think you can get away with using uh, a little bit of that around the edges here and put these grills in. And then the same thing with this on top is uh, using that there and just hold it down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I will use the uh, the super glue on the top because that's that's a rounded dome. These are just a flat surface. I don't want anything to kind of get in between the uh, 
this glow and the the grills that those grills are gonna look so cool so yeah I'm, I'm really digging this right now uh, what else do we have left to do I think that's really it is clean up on the windows and photo etch and that's all that I have left I did have a casualty unfortunately when I pulled my masks even though I was being careful uh, part of this decal that goes around the bridge or parts of this decal tore up so my advice is put several coats of clear on this to protect if you're going to mask over any decal like this. The decal is sturdy, but that tape just tore right through my clear coat and right through. I only had like two coats on. I should have put like four coats on. And it, it did take chunks out of this decal, so I went with a knife and I kind of tried as best I could to make it uniform around here. Uh, it looks a little wonky, but that's how it's going to have to be. Anyways, this week... This week, we're moving on to decals. We are doing the decals for the saucer. And the reason we're doing the decals for the saucer is right here. You see this? I love the design of this ship. It's my favorite Enterprise, but this is stupid. Especially on this model. This little tiny spindly thing holds up this entire giant saucer. It's not much better on the original one. It is a little better, but not really. I mean, this is, this is pretty pathetic sad. I know it's, it's space, there's no gravity, except there, there is because the ship has its own gravity and you're still gonna have torsion forces on a neck, especially with a ship this big and don't listen to my physics. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's, that's small. That's why I'm not moving on to the engineering hall and doing the decals first. I'm going to epoxy this. I got a really good five minute, two part epoxy and that's, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I've got a nice surface under here Nice clean plastic. I'm gonna mask this off. I'm gonna have a nice clean plastic, and I'm gonna epoxy the ever living snot out of this thing. Even that, even then, I do not want to be flipping this thing upside down to do the bottom and flipping it. You're just putting more stress on the neck. I'm gonna put as little stress on this teeny little thing as possible. So that's that's why I'm doing this. So we're gonna start with the bottom. And you can see, bottom still lighting up. Still looks cool. Still like this thing. I'm glad I did all the de detail, I effort to put in the detail paint on the sensor dome because it looks really cool. But the reason we're doing the saucer on the bottom is in case I screw up. You're not going to see this bottom as much as the top. And actually, he uh, Jerry gave, I think, several more of these pie wedges. So if I do screw up, I can just uh, use some microset. This is also a, a decal remover. I think it even says on here. Yes, it does. See? Decal. Let's turn on a light. Bing! Decal remover. Right there. There you go. So I'll be able to remove it. Well, let's do this. So we're going to start with the pie wedges around here. And then we're going to move on to these. The, the ones that go along here. Uh, and then we're going to clear coat the crap out of it. And then I'm going to go back in with my pearls and I'm going to start doing any little pearlescent detail painting. And this will be a nice test area for that effect I'm trying to get. I think, uh, yeah, trying it around the neck. I still have to, oh shoot, I didn't do that. I've got a little blue overspill I have to take care of possibly on there. But, oh, that's right, that's unplugged because this plugged in. Uh, so, I'm going to do this. I'm going to clear coat it. I'm going to use my pearls gonna go in there use my pearls and then I'll start putting the details on the details like around the the phaser banks uh, let's see what else uh, the registry the name back here and then the RTS sensors I'm not going back in and painting these things for a second time I've already messed this thing off the, this whole thing off like I think four times now <laughs> I'm not no no I wanna so I'm just gonna use the kit supply decals for these and then the reason I'm using not Jerry's awesome decals is because his has two little black dots to indicate where the RTS thrusters are which is cool if you're not lighting the kit but if you are lighting the kit and especially because I got portholes because I there's no way I could get those square on this scale I, I don't know how if someone can you're amazing but I, I they just how would you even uh, 
So I'm going to be using the kit supply. The, main, the kit supply ones are just this yellow shape with a little red around it, which is awesome because then you'll just see the little yellow windows shining through the decal. That's the effect I want. Doing that. So I've got the RTS, got these, uh, registry. Um, I think that's it for the details underneath. And then after I'm done with that, and shoot it with three or four coats of clear, then we're gonna move on to the top. And the top is a little more detailed. The top has the, uh, everything the bottom has, the pie wedges. Uh, it has, I think it has a nice little detailed decal that goes right around the bridge, it looks awesome. Has the pinstriping here, has the pinstriping around the bridge, and you can kind of, you can kind of see that now. Let's get some more light in here. What I'm talking about on the bridge where I had to kind of cut that decal up a little bit. Sadness. Uh, yeah, I got the RTS uh, has a little blue decal right here that goes by the crystal. Has a little registry here, the registry up front. Has the little hatch details. Little red uh, decals that go around the hatches. And, oh, oh dear. I totally forgot about the sensor bands. <laughs> oh my god. The sensor bands. Uh, we have those to deal with. We have those. So you can see how much room you have to work with. So one goes at the top, one goes at the bottom, and one somehow goes magically in the middle in between those windows. That's going to be interesting, to say the least. So that is what we're going to do this week. I don't know how far I'm going to get. Truth be told. That feels warm. Why does that feel warm? I don't like that. Got some warmth coming off the BC deck. Oh, that's not good. Just don't leave it plugged in for long. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get the bottom done, you guys. I'm gonna try to get the bottom done because it's not just decaling, it's also painting and figuring out exactly the formula that works best, 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 best for the paint. Uh, oh yeah, I also have that neat little decal that goes on the photo etch here. That's gonna look cool. And the little decals that go on either side of it that I think say United Federation of Planets, USS Enterprise. I think those are in the, I think those are in there. On the, around here, maybe? I'll have to look. Yeah, it's, so it's not just decaling, it's detail painting. And it's figuring out these, because he's got random ones that go around here. So I'm going to shut up and get to work. I will see you guys when I'm decaling. Be right back. Hey guys, thought I'd get a shot of the crystal and the impulse engines with the photo etch installed. Unfortunately, the light's really blowing that out. It's not that intense in person, but it looks really cool. Let's see if a little light will help that here. It helps a little bit. That's more realistic. I really like how the crystal turns out. It actually looks really cool on camera too. So, I'm done with that, and I'm moving on to the decals. Be back with that. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> done decaling the uh, Aztecs around here. Oh boy. Uh, they might not look so bad from that angle, but... i going to put a little light shine on them. You can see all the horrible silvering I got on those. And it's not just silvering. I've got... Uh, some lift. What I, I went through and I cut the ridges here, so when I put the micro set in there, it would pull down the uh, pull down the edges, but they're kind of starting to peel. That's kind of making me mad. Uh, I know how I got the silvering. I think uh, for, I used micro set when I put the decals down. I think that probably caused the silvering, so I should just use water and use micro set on top. And just kind of pull out the water. But yeah, you can see this edge around the neck here. A little overhang edge here, and that's starting to peel up. So, yeah, the edges are starting to rise for some reason. I let this dry all day, the decals, before I even touched it with my clear coat. So I don't know. Uh, I dusted on two coats, and the third one I went a little heavier. And that's when everything just did this. And actually, it was worse last night. Last night, it was just all peeled and cracked and crinkly. And I thought it was destroyed, and I had to leave it. Or I was going to swear a lot. 
And I came in this morning and it's fine. Well, it everything settled back down, but now later on in the day here, I see start to see this see this peeling. So I don't know. I'm still going ahead with my Aztec painting. I'm gonna start around here. Uh let's see what that does. Yeah, starting to peel back on some of these. I don't know if that's gonna get worse or what. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should put another clear coat on, if that's gonna make it worse. So I'm just gonna start with the Aztec and I can always just tear this whole thing off and I guess cry a lot because this took hours to do and these aren't cheap. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get started on the painting. Be right back. Hey guys, uh, huh, well, that didn't work. Um, the blue is just too intense pigment wise. The gold worked, the gold worked fine. Uh, you can see that in some light, and some light you can't see it. It worked okay. The blue is just too intense, you can see right here. And this looks like it's starting to peel even worse. So I am going to put this uh, aside and work on something else. I'll uh, be right back. Hey guys, I've moved on to the secondary hull. Uh, I haven't done much this week actually. I kind of stared at that uh, the underside of that primary hull and was all sad. Uh, so <laughs> every time I looked at it, I was like, what am I going to do? So I did that for most of the week. <laughs> and then I decided, hey, let's just work on the primary or the secondary hull. So right now I got my first coat of white on the pylons. And I am got the neck light blocking on the back here and all the windows drilled out of that's hard to see but that's the neck and I got the all the windows drilled out of there uh, let's see let's put that there um, I've been working on this I got all the windows drilled out all those big windows drilled out I don't have this drilled out yet for the photo etch but yeah I just got those drilled out now I'm gonna go in with my files and shape those things a little better. It looks pretty good. I can't really see that. Can't really see that either. Okay. But yeah, both sides done. All those windows just drilled out. You can see through them right now. But, uh, what is it? <clears throat> oh yeah, I uh, got this little piece out and I think we're going to have to expand that hole a little bit for my wires. But that's, that goes underneath here. The right way? That's the wrong way. There's only one way it can go. I'm trying to see. Is that the right way? Yeah, it doesn't fit in there, so obviously not. There we go. This whole secondary hull is going to require a ton of work. Just a ton of work. You've got uh, lips. I got a lip here. This side is higher. I want to flip it over. Of course, the opposite side is higher because, you know, reasons. This whole seam is a big bad mamma jamma. The seam around there, that's going to be a thing. And it just doesn't really want to line up here at the back. You see, there's another step here. There's a step underneath here. You're really going to have to... I don't know. Maybe I can massage that when I glue it a little bit. This is probably the least difficult part there. That seems easy. It's just a flat surface. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this out for my photo etch, and I think that's that's it, because I got the, uh, I got the, uh, what's it called, shuttle bay, and the arboretum to do. Probably going to do that a little bit later here. Um, do not lose this part. <laughs> uh, I've also got a little work done in here. I haven't drilled the holes for the lights yet, but I kind of just sanded them, and I really want to kind of glue these on. And I am going to glue these on, but I'm going to drill the holes in them first just because it would be more of a pain to get try to get in there from underneath. So, that's that. I got my shuttle bay. Uh, I still haven't messed with my photo etch for my, my photons or anything. Uh, this is the back of the bridge. This is the kit back of the bridge right there. There is the shuttle bay door, which I'll just leave removable. There are photo etch for, like... Uh, the panels of the door and they look closed. I might try those, see what they look like. Here's the shuttlecraft. 
And I was looking at the shuttlecraft today going, eh, maybe you should build a shuttlecraft. That'd be kind of fun. It's a little project, but they're missing parts. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I never built the shuttlecraft for that other kit I have over there, so maybe I'll just build that one. But yeah, th this comes with missing parts. You can see you've got, you've got your nacelles, your little warp engines. You've got the back. This is the back. Here is the top. Here is the bottom. And that was really cool. And uh, I think it was Star Trek V that these, uh, these, they actually detailed these panels in here. and They glowed. But if you notice the shape of the shuttlecraft, it has this, these, this kind of this shape, little L shapes on either side. There are supposed to be panels that go on top of those. They are not in the kit. Or I threw them away. <laughs> One of the, I don't think I did. Because the only other sprue I had, besides this and this, was the, the little bit of sprue around the primary hull. So they should be on this sprue. They are not on this sprue. So yeah, missing parts. I know they're in the ones for, uh, for the, the other kit. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. But anyways, that is where I'm at right now. I'll catch you guys up when I've got a little bit more done. See you in a minute. Hey guys, little update here. Uh, I installed the uh, photo etch uh, doors, I guess. <laughs> These doors, the travel pod doors. And I've marked off my windows and I'm currently uh, making a mess, drilling out my windows. And this is just rough cuts, these two. And then you can see where I drilled those, uh, there. Now you can see where I hold, drilled all those holes. That's all I'm doing is going through and I'm going to drill out those holes and I'm going to come back in with my, uh, get out of here, my micro files and then just start to, you know, clean up the edges. That's what I want to say. And the edges on the corners here, at least these two corners, are rounded. So I want to do something like this to preserve that uh, round edge. Let me come back and flatten this out. And I think they'll be wide enough for me to let's bring the brace down. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I want them wide enough. me to be able to get this in there and uh, let's see here get the uh, a little bit of stuff on here actually take a lot here there's not much material but starting to shape that window you can see it's rough but I will be cleaning that up so yeah just uh, going through I need that don't need you I also have the photo etch on my uh, shoot where are they oh they're in the paint booth on my neck there's two uh, two of these guys on the neck so I put the photo etch on there too well, that's really all I'm up to, is cutting these windows out. I do have the photo etch, but man, that looked like a lot of monkeying about that I did not want to do. You have to create a lip, you gotta do this, that, and the, ugh, no, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut these out. If, and if they, the, this cutting out doesn't work, if I screw it up, I've always got the photo etch. So I can go and put those in. It just, you have to make it flush with here, and you have to cut around. There is a jig for it, but man, it's just a lot of, whole lot of, not my skill level. I guess I'm not skilled enough to do that. <laughs> just, just not, not up to it. Yeah, a little pin vise. It doesn't take much to get through this material. It's surprisingly easy just to drill through there. Anyways, I'm going to shut up and get back to work. I'll be back in a second, guys. 
Hey guys, I got all the, uh, the windows out of these guys. Got a little primer just to look at them. All the windows out there. They were arboretum windows, that is. And there. And I got my light blocking coat on the neck. You can see. It's actually both parts. The other one's over here. And the pylons. Oh, I'm done with the white. I just put that on there and I'll be doing the blue next. Actually, unfortunately, that is where I'm going to leave it for this week. Uh, next week, I will be getting back into exactly where I am. Uh, I'll be getting into the uh, Arboretum and the Shuttle Bay. So, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do a lot of cutting for that. Well, I got to get that out of there for sure. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you again next time. Take care.